Hey guys, welcome to the channel and today we're gonna be having another video looking at the special summoning weekend. So we have two new heroes joining Watcher of Realms. So the two heroes are Pineza, which is like Salazar's girlfriend sort of thing. You can see that they're both lizards. So I think that tells you a lot already. And then we also have Kuria, uh, Kalta's uh, mage who specializes in AoE uh, damage as well, obviously, That's with all the counters uh, faction units. So we're just going to do a walkthrough of their skills and then also briefly talk about the epics with the 10x rates. I think Deimos is probably the only thing that we care about here and as how the game has always been, I'm sure the 10x rate will be rigged to, you know, summon Titus and Nazim instead and nobody's going to get any Deimos. I already have Deimos at A5, so that's not really a problem for me, but onto the video itself. So first we're gonna take a look at Kineza. So does it say here? So yeah, they are both from the skill skin village. And where's the part that they talk about? Salaza. Let's see, yeah. She met Salazar and then life began anew, blah blah blah. So yeah, I think they're just partners, which is exactly why they have this unique uh bond skill, which gives her more damage, but on Salazar it gives him more HP instead. So yeah, that's how it works. It'll be nice to see more of this um bond skills out because when you have them for like Captain Reeves and Cap and Reza, that's the XP and go boost bonus. And then on uh, Silas and Vienna. Vienna, I think her boost is that she gets more bone, more damage on her bone shield, which isn't that helpful. But I think on Silas, it's a lot better. It gives him like, uh, I think, 100% more damage on one of his spells. So that's nice. But yeah. So on a quick glance, uh, she's from the Nightmare Faction, and we'll just take a look at her stats. So, two tiles and at max. Wow, okay. 5.8k damage. That's pretty high. And her cost is pretty alright as well at 14 costs. I think most of the Nightmare Fighters are sitting at about 18 or 19 costs. So, will be interesting to see how she plays out. I think. Judging from her toolkit, which I took a look at earlier, she's pretty much just single target damage. And we'll just look at her talent firsthand. So basic attack has a 15% chance of gaining one T stack. And what, what is T? So it's a life force that enhances some skill effects, stacking up to three times. And upon reaching maximum stack, gaining this effect will instead generate 50 rage. So that means you want her attacking as much as possible to get the maximum T stack and then the rich regen after that to let her pop her out. And so she deals 50% damage to one enemy twice and it max that 60% six, damage. So 120% dam damage as with all single target attackers. And then her ultimate consumes all T, so it's auto, you can control it. And each stack does 105% damage to an enemy in range one time. So that means that all the enemies in her hit area will get hit once and then afterwards deals an additional 300% damage one time. And this goes up to 500% damage and 145% damage uh, respectively. And the skill cost goes down to 500. So I can see her really ramping up in terms of like the number of uh, T that she can get with max attack speed. Um, You'll probably be gaining that quite a bit and proccing her out quite a bit as well. And then over here we have, I think this is one of the more unique mechanics, dodge. I think we seldom see it. We have it on Hex if I'm not wrong. That's the only hero I can think of at the moment, but I think there was another one or two units with dodge mechanic as well. And then every 100 attack speed gives you 3% more dodge. So let's do a bit of math here. At max level, it's going to be 15% basic dodge rate. And we typically have 400 attack speed built on units. So that's going to give us an additional 5 times 4. So 20%, 35% uh, evasion at max. Right. And 
when you trigger the dodge, you also have a chance of gaining T stack. So that's going to be another area where she's going to be gaining those stacks really quickly. And let's see. T shadow enhances the next basic attack upon triggering dodge and making each attack deal 200% damage one time. Each stack of T makes basic attack and enhanced basic attack ignore 9% defense. So that's going to be 45% defense at max. And the damage is going to be 250%. And then last but not least, we have the bond with Salazar. So that gives stack increase of 120%. So yeah, I think it's pretty clear. This Kineza dude is going to be just all out single attack. Maybe she has a placement in like guild boss i guess if you have a nightmare like team because her basic attack is actually quite insane like it's one it's 5.8k i think the only other units that i can think, think of that comes close is like abomination if i'm not wrong as well as like uh valeria so yeah and her hp is pretty decent as well and i guess with the dodge mechanic she could also hold a ground in certain like campaign stages i guess where you need like a unit that self-sustains like kineza doesn't necessarily self-sustains but i think the dodge is gonna be helpful enough to make that happen so that's her skills and everything oh okay so this is getting interesting we just talked about her not having self-sustained but if we look at her a1 each stack of t restores three percent hp per second that's actually insane. So at max, it's going to be like 9% HP per second. So we just talk about her not having self-sustain and then the game just goes in and shows us her Awakened 1, which does exactly that. Crit damage. Surging Raw deals 100% increased damage on the final strike and inflicts stun. So I think the stun is really what people care about here. Rich Regen per attack increases every stack of tea consumed increases attack speed by last one this is a bit iffy because we know that attack speed is capped at like 400 so if you really build her at 400 attack speed and with the nightmare lot bonus do you really still need the awaken 5 i don't know i'm not sure but it seems that getting her to a3 is Pretty much gonna be sufficient if you're gonna be wheeling out but yeah that's that's kineza so i think very similar to salazar just all out single damage uh single target damage and i think it's really nice that um the cost is a lot lower compared to the other units that we have in game so that's kineza let's move on to kriya the other 10x bonus unit so Kriya is from the cultist faction, so she's a mage, magic damage, and let's see a max level 5.2k attack. I think that's pretty decent, and not sure if we can actually increase her attack speed, because that's going to make things a bit more interesting. Can we actually do so? I think we can, because if they don't, they'll normally like put a note here, I think. So cost wise she's at 21, pretty high to be honest. I think yeah, most of the other units have a much lower cost. Not not a lot lower, like I think Morrigan has an 18 or 19, same with Carmet. So I think those are the contenders when I look at her spells. So let's take a look at her talent first. So within 10 seconds, every three enemies killed in the basic attack range summons one storm crow. And the hero and the storm crew deals an additional 10 damage to slow enemies. So I think that's pretty similar to most of the cultist faction units. They all deal more damage when the enemies are slow. So what does the storm crew do? So it follows the target and attacks one time every four seconds after reaching the target. And each strike does 70% AoE damage to nearby enemies. And up to five storm crews can exist at the same time. And each of them lasts for 15 seconds. So we're already starting to see she's not going to come in handy at single target content, that's for sure. And she needs to be able to actually 
few units to become useful because the Storm Crows only appear after a unit dies within her attack range. And then the Storm Crows themselves do 70% AoE damage. It'll be interesting to see if the Storm Crow actually has some way to increase its attack speed because one time every 4 seconds is pretty long. That's going to be like Zealous attacking every 5 seconds. So her attack, she does 70% AoE damage on up to 3 enemies within her attack range and at max that's 90%. And it doesn't say that she does less damage to flying units. So maybe she has some use in Gear 3 as well to clear the right side. Although her range is pretty like lackluster. Then her ultimate strikes enemy in range with lightning 3 times, dealing 300% AoE damage up to 10 enemies each time. So that's going to be 130% damage. And the rage goes down to 600 and the initial rage cap of 350. So, okay. When the effects of Necrostorm Assault ends, enhances every Storm Crow on the field, summoned by the hero, increases its attack by 20% and allowing it to inflict slow. Effect lasts up to 10 seconds, at max 15 seconds, and then attack goes up to 30% as well. So, you can sort of start to see that um, her, her skills sort of synergize with each other quite well, because there's this slow effect that takes place, and even if you don't, there are other counters, faction units that inflict slow anyways. And then last but not least, when the Storm Crow disappears, increases the hero damage by 3% for 9 seconds and can be stacked up to 5 times. Which makes sense because she can summon up to 5 Storm Crows. So damage increase duration goes up to 15 seconds and the damage increase goes up to 5, 5% which is 25%. So her kit is really surrounded by being able to deal out continuous AoE damage and there needs to be mobs that are dying around her because if she doesn't have the Storm Crows, it, it's not going to work well. So probably think of her in like the Countess Faction Trial, Gearit 1, possibly uh, XP and Go Raid as well and maybe some parts of the campaign content. But the cost of 21 is pretty iffy to me in my opinion. So yeah, let's take a look at Awakening. So okay, there we talk about it. Um, whether there's a way to reduce the Storm Crow's attack interval. So that's her A1. So that goes down to three seconds. And attack increase and okay. Magic vulnerability of 30%. Interesting. Necro Storm Assault, that's her out, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we have all damage up by 8% and then when the effects of Storm Necro Storm Assault pants, there's a 50% chance to summon one additional Storm Crow. Interesting. So her reach of 600 is pretty low to be honest. So I can see her triggering it quite a bit. So maybe that's where her A5 comes in handy. But unless you're a whale, you're not going to get there. I think her A1 is pretty nifty already. I think that's nice enough. Compared to Cerebus, right, where his A1 it just basically slows units down. Not the best. I think this this just shows a lot more like raw damage output in my opinion. So that's Korea and Kineza. I think the other epic unit that I really care about is Deimos, to be honest. He's a beast and guild boss if you build him well, but of course you need him at A5 because that uh just Gives him all the extra perks that he needs. So his attack uh, ignores 15% 15, 15 of the target's defense. And then there's penetration as well. And then there's the tearing, st tearing stack cap, which goes up by 1. So this basically increases his damage, the more attacks it does. So, yep. So that's Deimos. I think the other units, I'm not going to talk about them because, you know, nobody really wants them. But that's the event for this weekend. Um... I am still hoping that maybe we'll get like a special Halloween 1 plus 1. We're not sure. Maybe after today's server reset, we can see if there's an event that takes place on Saturday or maybe Sunday like the other time. That's when the 1 plus 1 event came. So if you ask me whether I'm summoning for this, probably not. I mean, those two units sounds great in theory, but I'm at a stage where I am trying to like push for certain content but 
these units just don't look like they really cut it for me. Like, I need a Salaza more than a Kineza because I need the bleed application. And Korea, her cost is pretty high. So, I would actually prefer, I don't think I need a Morrigan, but I would actually prefer, where was she? Kamet, yep. So Kamet is really who I'm looking for, to be honest. To be able to push for gear rate 1. We do have Vienna already, but damage-wise it's not really there yet. Maybe I can ex ex explore Cerebus to see if that works. Because Cerebus is dealing quite a bit of damage at the moment in gear rate 120, which I'm trying to push for. So I think I'm going to hold out on this one. Unless I actually have the 1 plus 1 event that we talked about, I will pull for that. Because I am very near PD. Fifth time that we're hitting PD. Fifth time in a row. Which is really nice game. So yeah. I hope that helps uh, in terms of an overlook of the two heroes that we're going to be getting uh, added to Watch Our Realms this weekend. If you like the content, feel free to leave a like or a comment. And you know, if you can subscribe to chan my channel, that will help the most. But uh, wish you guys luck in this week's summons. And uh, have a good one. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.